Yeah, but I'm definitely gonna be on a book list because when I write my story, um, I know that it's gonna resonate with so many young girls. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it will be an inspiration to a lot of young girls because like a lot of people probably look at me now and they only see the good stuff, you know? Um, but for every good thing that has happened to me, there's probably two bad things that I've experienced um, to get that one good thing. So um, I think telling my story will be a way to help people just continue to push through. Um, Cause if nothing else, that's one thing that I know how to do. Yeah. I'm ready. Hi everybody, follow me into my bookstore, Books and Crannies. are in Martinsville, Virginia. We've been open for four years now. And um, we have new and used books. We have a lot of local books. And we also have um, a lot of creative things that different people locally have made um, to, to carry in here for me to sell. We have homemade, um, well, handmade bookmarks handmade cards, stuff like that, and all of those are local. So I went to Druid Hills for elementary, and Albert Harris was intermediate at the time when I was coming up, so I went there for fourth and fifth grade, and then of course Martinsville Middle and Martinsville High School. I was very social, and so I definitely made the best out of school, but also because I enjoyed learning, you know, it kind of came naturally to me. Most people would probably say that I was like a nerd, um, but I was a popular nerd, I don't know. Um, I was a cheerleader, but I like made straight A's and I was the class president uh, at, for high school. So I was somewhat popular, but just very academic. Like I, I was very serious about academics and I took school seriously. I wanted to achieve and um, I, I love school. My mom had me when she was 17 and we have a really good relationship. Um, we talk every day, several times a day. And um, I do feel like we are, we have a really solid friendship. Um, we still struggle with the mother daughter aspect because you know, I'm an adult now, but still maintaining our friendship that we've developed since I was a kid. Mm. My dad, it's funny because we have a really good relationship now as well. And um, I never really thought that I would be able to say that. Not to say that he wasn't active because my dad's always been active, but um, he he and I are very different when it comes to like things that we like. And so when I was growing up, I think it was kind of harder for him to relate to me um, and vice versa. But as an adult, like he's amazing. Um, I grew up in my grandparents' home on the West End. They still live there um, to this day. But I moved in with my grandparents, who are my dad's parents, when I was two, I think. My grandma took me in like her, her own, and I called myself her fifth child. Growing up, she was very uh, religious and um, very... We went to church every Sunday. I went to Sunday school faithfully. I went to her, with her to her church board meetings on Mondays. I went to a Bible study on Wednesdays. So I was very involved in the church. Um, and she made sure that she fixed me breakfast in the morning, like fixed me dinner in the evening. So she's very active and involved. Um, but I think that probably growing up, I kind of always felt misplaced. Um, and I didn't really understand why, because I had a good life, you know, I had everything that I needed, but I do feel like there was always like the 
not really understanding the situation. Um, and so it kind of overshadowed the, the good during the time. But you know, as an adult, you realize that things are the way that they are because they were meant to be that way. And so it's easier to accept. And this is our local author table. So all of these books are by people who live in this area. Um, most people don't even know we have that many authors in this area. So I think um, this is a great place for local authors to be able to showcase their work. And post COVID, hopefully we'll get back to doing um, local author events and book signings and whatnot. We have a used um, book section over here. You can find books of basically any genre for a very, very, very discounted price. We have our kids section, um, and this is where we used to do our children's readings on Saturday mornings. space for people to be able to come in and work or read, um, hang out if they want to, you can make coffee. We are offering curbside pickup, um, free local delivery. We've been doing a lot of online sales and shipping, so um, things have been still able to, to go well and run smoothly, but just a little bit different. I definitely dealt with um, being shunned somewhat. In a way, I was kind of living as two separate people in high school because, you know, I'm in classes with majority white people where I'm pushing myself to perform just as well as them, if not better, because I have something to prove as a black woman. Um, and then, I go home and I live in a black community and outside of school, all of my friends are black. And um, so it's kind of like a, I'm in classes where, you know, they're not in. So it's like a kind of a split between myself. I never really felt like I had a certain place um, that kind of merged the two worlds together until recently, honestly. Um, and I think that was just a way of me trying to not be too much of something to like that group, like to my black friends and the black community. I don't want to be too much of this because then you'll think I'm trying to be white. And for when I'm in my classes and whatnot, I'm hesitant to actually be who I am because I don't want you to think that I'm too black. You know, so um, it was definitely a struggle trying to find a balance between all of that. But in my adult life, I just learned to be who I am and it just all flows. Okay. So on this side, this is all nonfiction. We have poetry and hobbies, um, philosophy, love and family, um, our cooking section, health and fitness, and then we have our history section down here. Um, and then we also have a small religious section, um, psychology, sociology, science and education, stuff like that. And then we have um, nature, pets, travel, that, si that sort of um, genre down here. Over here, we have young adult which is my personal favorite section. Um, I love anything young adult, whether it's fantasy, romance, sci-fi, I love young adult books. This is what I call our race relations political section. It has everything basically that's been the best sellers for 2020. I think people are trying to educate themselves more on 
how to be better people, how to treat people equally, how to be more accepting. So these are a lot of the books that people have been buying this year to kind of educate themselves on black history and just the, the real history of the United States and how they can make a difference. You didn't give me no just to that questions and I was looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not give you any this or that questions. And honestly the this or that questions was meant to be like warm-ups. But you killed the warm-up, so I just I just kept. Well you gotta ask me some this or that questions because She said she a whole bunch of times just got freed up. <laughs> Chocolate or vanilla. Mm -hmm. Chocolate. Cake or pies? Pies. You can only have one of these for the rest of your life. All your drinks are hot. Even your sodas, your water, and all that type of stuff, right? Or, for the rest of your life, all your food has to be cold. I'm going to have to go with hot drinks because I drink coffee all day long. Um, I drink room temperature water and I like hot tea, so I'm, I'm gonna make it. But I need my food hot. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> cats are my biggest fear. Yeah, that's it. I'm terrified of cats. Will never like a cat. Don't ever want to be in the same room for a cat. I don't like to see cats on the TV, so easy. When did that happen? I feel like I was traumatized at a very young age because I don't even remember. I've always been scared of cats. So Delvin's family, his mom and them had a cat. My mama would get so mad at me because we would go to his house and the cat would be sitting on the porch. And I'd be like, were you going to make the cat leave? She was like, no. I was like, I'm not getting out. And I would literally sit in the car until she left. Or if the cat got off the porch, then I would get out, but mm -mm, not doing it. So after high school, I actually had my son, Trey, when I was 18. So graduated high school, June 2018, I mean, not 2018, um, 2007, and I had Trey in November. Being a young mother definitely changed my life for the better. And I know for some people, that's kind of like a, a hindrance, but for me, it was like, I have a purpose now. Um, and it made me really go 10 times harder. I can't really say that if I hadn't had Trey when I was 18, that I would have pushed myself as hard as I did to get where I am, because when you don't have the weight over your head of being responsible for someone else, you have more opportunity to just make you know, just be, live a little bit more recklessly and use that excuse of being young to, you know, just kind of live however you want to. Not saying that I didn't, like, still make a lot of crazy decisions and do some wild stuff, because I did, but um, it definitely shifted my focus and made me go a lot harder. And also, Trey came along in my life at a time where I was, very insecure um, and very lacking in self-love. Um, just because I think from the way, from my upbringing, I had convinced myself in my head over the years that there was something wrong with me and that that is why I wasn't living with either my parents, I was living with my grandma. And um, like I said, I don't feel this way now, but you know, when you're going through it as a kid, you do come up with these questions of, you know, well, why am I not good enough? And so I think I had kind of gotten to that point where I just didn't see myself in the light that I should have. And so um, having him at a young age really gave purpose to my life. Shout out Marley. We ain't got to Marley yet. Marley oh, just got oh, here two years ago. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Marley. Oh yeah. We definitely should talk about me bringing her to work every day. And you need to ask me what that was like because the people need to know. <laughs> <laughs> she, said, she said the people need to know about her bringing to her. Like I don't even know 
how I made it through those two years mentally. She's the CEO. So my little helper, Marley Savannah Flood, which she will tell you is her name. Is you cannot call her Marley. You have to call her Marley Savannah Flood. Um, but. <laughs> I had my little helper six days before my birthday. Um, and so I started bringing her with me to work when she was maybe four months, like when I first came back to work. And she came with me to work every day up until June of this year. Um, so, it's been uh, it's been quite a journey bringing her to work every day. Um, for anyone who follows me, like on social media, on Snapchat, back during those times, like every day, I'm posting videos of her. Like when she was crawling, she would take all the books off the bottom shelf. I put them back, she take them off again. So then, of course, she eventually starts walking, and she has upgraded from the bottom shelf to the next shelf. And she would take the cards off of the card rack and just like um, my inventory stickers. I still have inventory stickers stuck to the floor behind my counter. Or she would just peel off the inventory stickers and stick them to the floor. So she I has a playpen full of toys right beside me, but instead would rather play with bookmarks and books off the shelves. I definitely probably spent more time. Um, cleaning up her messes and uh, trying to prevent her from getting into things when she was here, then I was actually being productive. But, oh, my customers like loved coming in and talking to her and interacting with her. She was mean to them all, but they loved her anyway. So she keeps me on my toes. And I definitely miss having her here with me at work, but with the way my store has grown, um, with online sales, it just would not be possible to get my work done and have to take care of her too, so. Over here, we have our biographies. We also have romance and self-help. Um, we have an African-American section here. This is like all fiction by African-American um, authors, but we also have some nonfiction mixed in as well so it's just kind of like a one-stop shop if you're looking to support black authors um, or read about black history over here this is our big um, fiction section so we have our classic literature down here um, thriller and horror novels and my uncle fusses at me because I have the thriller and the horror books together he's a horror fanatic so he does not feel like they need to go together but I digress. <laughs> um, this is sci-fi and fantasy, which I love as well, um, and mystery and suspense, and then the general fiction, which is like your book club novels. Um, most of the time when I get ladies who come in and ask for a good book, book club suggestion, this is where I take them because this is like your bestsellers for the year and like all your new um, hardbacks, just coming of age stories, so those do really well for, for book clubs. Um, and then we have our used books in the, the, the boxes on the tables and on the floors. Um, and those are reasonably priced. These are a dollar for the paperbacks and anywhere from $3 to $5 for hardbacks. I found out about the grant program in January 2016. Jennifer Bowles, who is my childhood friend um, and also councilwoman here, she sent me a link um, with the information about it, not knowing that I may have even wanted to start a business or apply or anything, but she'll send me things like that just to, you know, hey, this is what's going on if you know anybody who's interested. So she sent me that and um, I don't know, I just had this idea that I should apply and I wasn't quite sure of what I wanted to apply with. And so I'm telling one of my friends who, um, she, she doesn't live here, she lives in Virginia Beach, but she's like, you love books, you should open a bookstore. So, and it's just a random, really random idea that she threw out. So my wheels start turning because we haven't had a bookstore since Walden Books opened. I last went to Walden Books to buy Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows when I was 19. Um, 
So I just, like I stayed in Walden Books. I don't know if everybody else felt the same way that I did, but I'm like, hey, if I feel like we need a bookstore, it's gotta be somebody else in Martinsville who feels like we need a bookstore. Um, so I just kind of applied for it and took the idea and ran with it. I have seen growth that I still can't wrap my head around today just in this pandemic. And um, sometimes I still struggle with um, the acknowledgement of that just because we are in the middle of a pandemic. Um, and so it's really hard to understand how my business has grown so much when there's so much or so many people in the world who are suffering and struggling right now. So I'm extremely grateful um, to that. But um, prior to the pandemic, I honestly didn't know that I would be able to keep my doors open once it was over. And had I not um, gone viral on Twitter back in June, where my online sales increased, I'm probably, I'm like 95% sure that I probably, my doors will be closed now. Going viral on Twitter has changed the trajectory of my store and the vision that I had for my store, honestly. So I think it was on June 2nd, maybe June 3rd, I had tweeted that I was hesitant for saying that my bookstore was a black owned business for so long in fear of losing on white customers. And I said that I was no longer gonna be living in fear and I would be screaming it from the mountaintops. I don't know, I don't, I don't even think that I knew that I was on my bookstore's page. I really thought that I was on my personal page talking about my bookstore. And so then it like starts getting retweets and likes and I'm like, wait, I'm on my bookstore's page and then it just kept going and um, so I told Trey, I'm like, I think I'm going viral. For hours, it just kept going and I ended up being at like 335,000, 400 some thousand likes and then like 35,000 retweets. And then I ended up gaining like 35,000 followers on Twitter for my bookstores page and I started receiving just like a huge rush of online orders. I mean, I was getting like three hours of sleep probably for a month filling online orders by myself. Um, no lie. <laughs> yeah, so luckily this was like right around the time that the daycare called me and was like, hey, we have an opening for Marley, do you still want it? And I'm like, yes, she has to come. <laughs> yeah, so when I say that my store has experienced a growth that I really could, I still can't wrap my head around. Like I really mean that. I cannot wrap my head around it at all. Um, like I have people from California, New York, everywhere ordering from me and like they're repeat customers. Like they continue to come back and I'm like, I don't know. I don't, it's crazy to me. Um, and they say that like it's because of my customer service, but for me, it's just, I'm really grateful that y'all are picking me to shop from. So I'm about to go above and beyond and do whatever I need to do to make sure you come back. Um, because I know that the price point, I can't compete with Amazon's price point because they sell books for the price that independent booksellers buy them for. So um, price point is not my competition, but I'm gonna give y'all this customer service and, um, like that's, that's really all I have is me. Um, so I just try to give the, the best version of myself when I'm interacting with customers, with emails, um, with meeting like shipping needs, all of that. Um, I just, I'm very, very adamant about putting the customer first. And I do feel like that is why um, so many people do continue to shop with me and they spread the word about my store. Um, so hopefully books and crannies will be around for many years to come. Uh, Michael Jordan or LeBron? Jordan. Why? Um, I used to have his picture on my nightstand when I was a kid. So. Okay. Uh, fiction or non-fiction? 
definitely fiction. I like to escape with books. So the wilder the story, the mo more unbelievable, outlandish, I'm all in. Netflix or reading? Oh gosh. Reading, definitely. But because reading requires more focus, and I do have a two-year-old, I watch Netflix more often, probably. Jay-Z or Future? Is this real? Like, what? Jay-Z? Jay-Z or Drake? Still Jay-Z? Jay-Z or Nas? Nas. It's a question I was waiting on. <laughs> Why not? Um, I am... I've been in love with Nas since seventh grade. Delvin and I had very many arguments about Nas versus Jay-Z, because he was Jay-Z, I was Nas. But I just love Nas's lyricism. He's more thought-provoking for me. Um, yeah. Um, Nas or Biggie? Still Nas. Biggie or Tupac? Biggie. And I, I'm not saying that Biggie is a better rapper than Tupac, but I am a fan of Biggie's catchy catchphrases, lyrics, like, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Or, what's the other one? Winter? The coldest one ever? Yes. Uh, that's not even the, not even the same. Okay, so I will tell you that another book series that I really, really loved growing up was the series of Unfortunate Events, which is now a Netflix show. That would probably be a better comparison between Harry Potter and, than Harry Potter and Coldest One Ever, but it's still gonna be Harry Potter. She did her thing with Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> And then this is just my little um, workstation. I will not let you come back here because it's a mess. Um, I have a lot going on, especially during the holiday season, just trying to get things shipped out. We have these, um, all of these are packages that will get picked up on Monday to go out. So we've been really busy, um, especially during the holiday season. And luckily we've been able to sustain ourselves throughout the pandemic and um, people are at home more, they're reading more. So, you know, come to Books and Crannies. That is the one thing that I love about Martinsville is the community because when you know people here, the love and the camaraderie and the support that, that people um, show here is, is really, really genuine, I feel. And honestly, I don't know that I could see me running this business anywhere else, um, which is crazy for me to say now because there was a time that I didn't know that I would even be able to keep my doors open because like the traffic had become so low here. And I don't know if that's just like the economic state of, of the city or what, but, um, I don't know. I feel like my business has become a staple in Martinsville now and moving it just kind of seems counterproductive for the community.